Thank you. Um, we heard this morning a very powerful argument against a, uh, a coexistence of uh, communities against immigration and so on, in the sense that uh, immigrants would transform the uh, culture of a community and there would be uh, sort of cues between various communities and so on, as, for instance, the example was both the Estonian and Russian and so on. And I wonder if there is a libertarian argument that could come out of the Ottoman uh, experience, where for hundreds of years, uh, various communities lived together in relative harmony, and Greeks and Armenians and uh, so on, as uh, Mr. Fakhtol has uh, reminded us uh, earlier. Um, what was constitutive of the Ottoman identity? Because if I capture and so on in its identity, I mean, how did people view themselves as the subjects of the empire or Greeks and have nothing to do with the Armenians of Croatia and the Armenians and so on? And what, what was the exact nature of their identity? Well, I will. Good question, thank you. Um, well, there can be an integration from the Ottoman Empire for a libertarian way of looking at these questions. But I think we should also realize that the Ottoman Empire kept these different communities uh, autonomous and existing with their identities, partly thanks to the fact that it was a be moderate. The social structures, and you had little interaction between these groups. For example, the, uh, the Kurds, I mean, they were in their community and they didn't, for example, there was no central education for them. There was no, I mean, until the modern times, until the 19th century. So when you go and open school in Damascus, which language that would be? That's a new question. So I think mean, modernization creates these ties. Like railroads, telegraphs, education, bureaucracy, and what language that will be, how will it operate? That's a new question, yeah, which was not there in the 16th century. So there is, so, so modernization unavoidably you know, brings these communities into each other, and you have to have some national, I think, uh, system. We have the Ottomans had a problem in the legal political system they had in, in the Vienna time until the 19th century. There were different legal structures. Christians had to go to their own court, their priests would take care of their issues, and Jews would there would deal in their legal issues with their rabbis, and Muslims would go to the same church. It's a long time, but the more you had space, the more you had further interaction with these groups, it became increasingly complex. The more and the more you had a a legal case between a Muslim and a Christian, and a Christian and a Jew. So, which court will take care of that? I mean, that question became more and more problematic. And then that is why they had to get the secular law for I me. Mean, based on the European idea, they reformed Ottoman laws and created a single uh, like it's, it's law or called agenda, which is called for all Ottomans in regards to their fate. So, I think it is in the nature of modernity to somewhat super, you know, traditional identities. But I think there are different ways of things. There's an authoritarian way of trying to crush everything and try to wipe it out, like the French did after the revolution, and by the French. And then there is a there is this more, I think, liberal way in which you yes create a national language, you teach Turkish people, but you don't go and ban Turkish. It is there, and if they want to advance for the environment, so they can. But they also teach her everybody because if you say, you know, country and people who find jobs, and I come when you help them. So I think there is this, they're too extreme. And, uh, and but we can get some inspiration for the fact that the community really makes this lives in the coins together, close together for example, I need to get back. Is that an answer? Uh, yeah, just very briefly, and I, I think you're right, I think the crux of the matter is, uh, is, is a modernity, right? 
Um, the only thing, just to put a little bit of a gloss on this here and there, even um, the, the people before the modern period, when the different groups had their own different law courts, when Muslims and Christians had the, had the, uh, a case, had some sort of case between one another, that happened actually all the time. There was a lot of trade going on, and there was there are many instances where they would sort of decide between them, which would be, and sometimes they would go to Christian courts. Sometimes the Christians actually prefer going to the Muslim courts because uh, they believe they would get better uh, uh, better justice served there. But the real uh, problem is, I agree with you, comes during uh, when the Ottomans try to modernize, when they try to, to turn the Ottoman Empire into something resembling a European uh, state. The one that the, if I just one last thing on this, something you mentioned this morning, is very, very important. In 1876, there was a constitutional revolution in the empire that established a, the Ottoman Empire as a constitutional monarchy. And that lasted until 1878. And that was the constitution the Young Turks reinstituted in 1908. In 1876, uh, one of the things I've, I've been interested in working with uh, on the subject of the Turkish there's actually a fair amount of evidence that even then, in that late, there were plenty of prisoners who were going to participate in some kind of autonomy. And it seemed to be part of the bottom. It seemed like it was an attempt to create the ego den or the post pandemic that you perceive as possible. So, sir, some Jewish and Christian leaders didn't like that because it gave brought new responsibilities like compulsory military services. They were happy to pay a little bit more tax to stay away from them. And now they were equal and they were supposed to go to military. So some prefer the old ways, while some of them like the old Yeah, I'd like to ask Mustafa about his development with the current work of Arthur and also the Beach Act, which is very strained. Arthur captured a lot of people. Is that 
So this is very close to the game. Uh, and I don't think that they're the same thing, but it is a little surprising. You know, it's, uh, it's my session through this narrow case okay, so of this great prediction, you know, uh, from there. Two short questions. I was the expert the other one, how I was the short question. Uh, I think the question of which case is the where there's a checkline caused by this test on the other side of the universe. I don't know the actual figures for the test. The question about the increase, the additional test, the amount of population. My understanding is that it's sometimes, in certain periods, you can't remember about six, seven years. But my understanding is that frequently, not always, the tax close to uh, as a kind of um, tithe or alms that is paid by Muslims called zakat. Um, so one uh, one body of literature argues that these are similar, uh, similar in size. Other things I've read said that the the GZA, the, the tax paid by the poll tax paid by the Jews are times. Oh, actually, no, the other year. I would say it's pretty very uh, very uh, 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 change 
uh, accompanied the 19th century with the importation of ideas like nationalism about who I am and what that, that, what that entails. And one of the interesting questions I think about both the Ottoman and Habsburg empires is to look at the attempts they made to try to solve that question. Um, one, one thing that actually I've, I've written on, uh, I've written a short article about this, was that the system in the Ottoman state is sometimes called the left system, whereby each of these different organizations had the different religious, religious groups had a great deal of uh, autonomy. Um, Karl Renner actually proposed something like that as a solution for the troubles of the Habsburg Empire. Uh, just as it was kind of initiated in the Ottoman Empire, uh, I got writing under various students uh, said we should try something like this in the Habsburg state as well. In both cases, though, I think it goes back to your question because it comes down basically to a question of identity and also authority, where authority lies in the, in the role of the state. In a powerful centralizing state, something like the U.S. system, it's different sort of uh, multi-centric centers of law is, it can't work, right? But in a decentralized, weak central state, um, it did work. And maybe just one thing, uh, I totally agree. And I think it's also related to centralization because in the Ottoman Empire, people, until the end of it, people identified themselves with their village. Who are you? I'm a Muslim. I'm a Christian. But now, who are you? Became I'm a Turk. I'm an Albanian. I'm a Kurd. And that rise of this national or ethnic identity brought in. Can I? Can I just? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, but isn't it correct, for instance, that even long before points out, you had a uh, multi, not only religious, but multi ethnic empire, and people were known uh, only their uh, nationality. I mean, they would be referred to as the Croatian, Mehmet Ali, or the Albanese, you know, or the whatever, Armenian, and so on. And they could reach, if they converted to the early stage, they could reach the highest position in the empire, become ministers and generals, and, and so on. And after the hands map, they did no longer had to convert to Islam. And at the end of the empire, actually, I wonder if the Turks were not having a raw deal in the sense that all the major positions were held by people that were not ethnically the Turks. Exactly like in the Oslo, in the Asper Empire, at the end of the empire, it was run by Hungarians more than by Austrians. So I don't know if I'm correct in saying this or, or or not, but the ethnicity was very much part of individual identity, but yet everybody was a lot of them. I mean, uh, that's true. Uh, the thing is, the ethnicity was not denied, and people who could easily refer to their ethnicity, someone would be a Kurd, an Arab, or an Albanian, or a Croat, or a Serb. But that was not how people were legally defined. So, in fact, right. legally you were defined as a Christian. I mean, an Armenian Christian. I mean, you would be defined as the church that you belong to. Mm -hmm. If you're Armenian, you were a member of Armenian or Christian. Or you could be an Armenian Catholic church. That was only one So you could, if you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, so among Muslims, whether you are a Kurd, Arab, Albanian, Bali, whatever, you could only just you know, specify that you're from the class. You're right from New York. It's like that to give you an identity. It's a deeply losing one again. And, and it is true that the Ottoman Empire was not a Turkish Empire per se, because the Ottoman elite was very multi ethnic. I mean, many Ottoman uh, sultans had Christian uh, wives. So, actually, so the, the, I mean, the son of the, you know, very like a the multicultural family, you know, child, and that would be sultan. Today, that's, it's no accident that, that some harsh Turkish nationals, some really Turkish racists, See the Ottoman Empire as a treason to Turkishness <laughs> because it was not fully Turkish and makes Turkish blood a terrible mistake. And it's and in, in today in Turkey, in today's Turkey, there is a there's a, a, a clash between the people who aspire to the Ottoman heritage and who are diehard Turkish nationalists. 
But you actually don't see anything to not turn fish as alien. But people who think more on the Ottoman line think, oh, we'll maybe forget our mortality and go see the one day we need to turn fish. So that still knows, I mean, traditions, uh, or this is the question. Can I just make one very brief follow up to that? I think that the distinction you is really crucial between this, uh, the, the sort of legally defined identity, which has nothing to do with ethnicity, and the idea that sort of these monikers or nicknames that people sometimes have uh, alluding to some sort of ethnicity. The other thing that I might caution, uh, another caution on, on terms like ethnicity, is these are very mutable categories. Right, it's terms like Arab or Albanian or even Turk. What those things meant in what those terms meant in the 17th century are not necessarily what they mean to us today when we use term ethnic terms like that. Um, the final thing about this about is the nationalism of these and the Ulets. The crucial thing about the Ulets is not only that they're defined religiously as opposed to ethnically, whatever that means, uh, but that they were not territorial. And that's also something that's crucial. They, uh, it, it was a person, a kind of personal legal system where, first, where law adhered to the individual person as opposed to, to a territory. Uh, and that's why uh, in the post autumn world, uh, the nationalists uh, faced so many problems, many problems, self declared problems, because they were minorities, national, suddenly national minorities. Living in sort of these islands all over the Ottoman successor states. That's one of the legacies of the Ottomans, the, the, the Ottomans, who were able to maintain this, this long term. So, just again, again, just a gloss on what you were thinking. Well, again, I think this Ulysses is interesting because uh, it shows that Islam did not. At least forcefully, plan to convert Christians and Jews into Islam. From the very beginning, Islamic law accepted them as what they are. And it's interestingly, at the time, even before the Ottoman Empire, some Ottoman, some Islamic emirs, sultans, didn't like Christians to convert into Islam because they were getting into practical texts. So, uh, so keeping them as what they are is okay. So just be there. And, Christian, live there, and prosper, and pay a national tax, that's fine. And theologically, that is also theologically possible, because Islam thought that it could be from those things, whereas, like, paganism was not appropriate. And idolatry was the heresy, not the Christianity, Christianity was the most, except from the very beginning, and then the theological debates allowed the creation of such a uh, relative religious order. 